For 20 years, you've trusted us to reinvent the standard in sports nutrition products. We don't plan on stopping, just like you. In the new age of social media fitness celebrities, a few names always stand out. One of them is Simeon Panda. He began his journey in London as a bodybuilder and a fitness coach. With the explosion of social media, Simeon built an incredible following with over 9 million subscribers. He's a true fitness entrepreneur, having his hands in multiple businesses including online coaching, clothing, and supplements. But even with all the success, Simeon often gets challenged online about its claims of being all natural. We met earlier this year to discuss this and many other topics in his new home in Marina del Rey, California. Simeon, good to meet you, man. Good to meet you, man. We're in LA right now. Yes, you yes. Know, and you moved here recently, right? Yeah, first, oh, I keep getting it wrong, but I think it's like five months now. Five months, wow. Yeah, yeah. Big change from, from UK, huh? It is, but like I keep saying to people, I've been traveling to LA for the last five years right. so many times that the transition wasn't a big deal for me. It was like, mm -hmm. um, it was like I'm just, it's like I'm being home. Um, and that's funny, it's funny because the area that I always stayed in is the area that I've moved to, because I know it. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna stay here, but mm -hmm. for now, it was like, uh, for this first year, I'm going to stay in the area that I know and then let me get my bearings and mm -hmm. actually get to know LA mm -hmm. to decide where I w actually want to live, you know? So, so what's, what's one thing you like about the move and what's one, th one thing you don't like about the move? Uh, I'll, I'll go with the easy one, weather. That's an easy one. Even that's though it's raining today. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> even though it's first raining time ever. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Even though it's raining today, right. I'll say the weather. That's an easy one. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I don't like, it's, it's too broad a subject to just say food, mm. but there is like certain, certain restaurants that I've been to the uh, salt content um, in, in food has mm. shocked me, you know? Salt, salt content. S sodium, yeah, yeah, like... Uh, Too much. There's been restaurants, there's at least, at least a handful of restaurants we've been to where I've literally had to send the food back and say, I can't eat that. Most people here are used to it, because when, like, when I buy food, I read labels. Right. And uh, when I've seen the labels here, the sodium content is crazy compared to back home. But because everyone's here is used to it, they won't taste it. Me, personally, I will because I'm like I'll be sensitive to salt because I don't even have salt in my house, so I don't even use it. Wow. Um, yeah, so I'll be more sensitive to it. So yeah, is over it, here it's been a bit of a little bit more, of issue. More of a taste thing or more of like a health thing? It's a health thing, but obviously when I'm ordering my meal and I'm tasting it, it's a taste right. thing, right? right <laughs> and then right, it's right. like shit, man. This is this is loads of salt. Right, right. Yeah, so would you would you say people in UK are more health conscious than than in in US? It's hard to say on an individual level. I wouldn't necessarily say on an individual level, but I'll talk about controls, the way that things are controlled in terms of uh, what, what, what brands can do mm -hmm. with their food, what they can put into their food, I think that's more controlled. So that's, that's a government issue, that's not mm. an individual thing. An it's more control over there. Yeah, yeah, with regards to what, what, um, to, to, to what the nutritional values of food. So with that being said, it's gonna be easier for people to choose you know, the right foods. Mm -hmm. But on a, on a general level of uh, being health conscious, as individuals, I couldn't necessarily say off the bat that, yeah, uh, UK people are more healthy, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's what you have around you, the options you have around you to, to, mm -hmm. to select from, you know, and it's gonna be more difficult over here mm -hmm. because, like I said, a lot of things are high in salt, high in fat, mm -hmm. and those are your options, so it's, hard, it's, it's harder, mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. So what's the main reason you moved here? I mean, it wasn't for the weather, right? I mean, it wasn't was for No, nah, it wasn't for the weather, no, no. <laughs> it's uh, opportunities over here. Uh, there's so many opportunities. Um, my business, like um, distribute, I can distribute from the US. My biggest customer base is the US. Mm -hmm. Like even though I'm from the UK, my biggest customer base is the US. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, it makes sense for me to distribute from here mm -hmm. and not have all the complications when like people come at me about can you ship from from the US because they don't want to pay high prices in regards to shipping and they don't want to wait for ages for their stuff to arrive. But uh, one of the main things I came here for was acting. You know, that's what I'm pursuing. I had my first acting class, yeah, yesterday or the day before. So I'm pursuing that. That's one of the main things I'm here for. 
And um, yeah, just don't, like, like I said, opportunities. Over here, there's just so much going on. Mm -hmm. And I feel um, like with my business, I can, I can live anywhere. You know, most of my stuff is online. So it'll be, it's great to be in a nice mm -hmm. environment like this with a lot of positive attitude around people. Yeah. Now, you are considered to be one of the most influential people in the fitness industry. You know, by the statistics, basically, sure. the stats yeah. that you're able to build your following, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, do you think that makes it easier to transition into acting? Because you have a fan base, that people will follow you. Sure. Um, but yeah, well, the fan base isn't going to hire me <laughs> for, the, for the stuff. I get what you're saying. Yeah, ho hopefully. I'd like that, you know, because, <laughs> you know, that, if it does make it easier, that's, that's good for me, isn't it? You know, but I'm ready to work hard regardless. Uh, irrespective mm -hmm. of any following, I'm still in the acting class at beginner level. You know, I'm still mm -hmm. starting at beginner level, mm -hmm. regardless of any following. That doesn't mean anything. No one knows that there, you know. So, yeah, I'm just happy to learn and uh, work on my craft. What is, what is the secret of your success? I mean, kind of, can you tell me a little bit more about how you started and where you are right now, kind of like your journey? Uh, it's been a long journey. Uh, I started uh, back in maybe 2000, 2001, wow. and um, at like 15. Mm -hmm. uh, long story short, I fell in love with training. It was, it's like I found what fits me perfectly. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't even have any uh, goal in mind necessarily. You know, like, so you know, you speak to people, they say, I wanted to be a bodybuilder, I wanted to be this, ex never had any of that. It was just, I love training, this, this, feels, this feels dope. The actual act of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the actual act of it, exactly that. Just lifting weights feels dope for me. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, as, as the years went on, um, I, while I was doing this, I was just doing the regular things that everyone does, going to school, going to college, working the nine to five. I was going to uni and uh, I decided, halfway through that, you know what, this training thing, like I, I can make it a career. Let me, let me become mm -hmm. a PT. Mm -hmm. So I uh, became a PT. Mm -hmm. I was a PT for a good few years, maybe three, four years. Like in a regular gym or some kind of a chain? Um, uh, several gyms. Eventually I went on to do it just uh, freelance on my own, mm -hmm. but I went through several gyms. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, it was fine, it was cool, but um, at some point I started to feel like I wasn't using my head. And that's no like disrespect to any PT, like use your head, of course. But for me personally, it was like, right. I, I just, I was training people in the city. Mm -hmm. So uh, people were coming from their office jobs. I was training them and thinking, you know, I could, I could probably do what you guys do. And mm -hmm. I just wasn't stimulated in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I left PT in and uh, wanted to do something challenging. So I took up accounting of all things. Accounting? Accounting, wow. yeah. I started studying accounting. I was taking exams. Uh, I got a position as a training accountant eventually got a position as a finance assistant. So um, I'm working in finance now, but I'm still training. That's the thing, I'm still training every day, mm -hmm. still training hard, still training intense, never let up on that. Cause mm -hmm. as I said, that was something that, you know, made me me, like I, right. I, I loved it, enjoyed it. So while doing that, I'm working this nine to five. I've been in this nine to five, maybe three years, mm -hmm. been promoted several times, was enjoying my work. But I thought to myself, I've got all this experience. By now I've been training 10 years. I've got all this experience. I don't want a PT no more. Like, I just don't want a PT, like, it's not mm -hmm. something I want to do. But I've got experience to share, knowledge to share. I designed a website myself, designed ebooks and uh, blog, blog posts. Blog posts was the first thing before the ebooks. Mm -hmm. And when I put the blog posts out, it was just, uh, it was just the, 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 the stuff that people who are new to lifting won't know yet. Uh, so I just put those posts out and people, re people reacted to them very well. Uh, my following started to grow exponentially. And then, um, yeah, I just thought, okay, let me put some, let me make some ebooks of my training because I don't want to train people like physically there. I can put what I know on paper. I did that, sold them. They sold very well. Mm -hmm. It put me in a position where I could leave work. So I then had several engagements lined up. So um, tours of doing seminars, talking about fitness. Mm -hmm. And once they were all booked, I left work, flew to India, Egypt. I was traveling all over doing these seminars with Ulysses. People know Ulysses. All from your from your website. All from just building up a following. Wow. You know, so now social, 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 media. social media, yeah. So now people like they knew who I, who I was. Um, we then created like um, we did tours off the back of that, you know, yeah. So through like uh, India, e Egypt, um, Australia, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I did these with Ulysses, like we were just touring and we'll do talks. Ulysses uh, is, is, is another popular influence, yes, from, from yeah, UK, yeah, right? yeah. So, um, yeah, after like after doing the tours, um, yeah, things was just kicking off for me and. Long so short. And here yeah. you are right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great, man. But, but uh, did you have an aspiration of actually being like a bodybuilder? Because you mentioned you did some competition. Like, yeah. Like what, was, what did you kind of have in mind? <sighs> was it I, men's physique or was it bodybuilding? Or? Now, see, there's no... See, see they, when guys train now, mm -hmm. they're thinking, am oh, I men's physique? Am I classic? 
I didn't even, when I was training, I didn't even have it in mind that I was going to be a bodybuilder, let alone any frigging category of bodybuilding. Right. I was just, yeah, this is dope. I love lifting weights. And uh, it was only, like I said, I was training at home. I had a, it was only had the realisation that I was packing on muscle when mm. one of like, my brother's friends came around. He was like, whoa, your brother's, <laughs> your brother's looking big, you know? He's like, yeah. And, and that, even I didn't have the, the, even it didn't kick into me. So when he said that, I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh yeah, this, this, this is working, man. Yeah. <laughs> and it made me excited to, to see what I could do with it, you know? Mm. But again, it was still like, if you're training at home, mm. and bear in mind, when I started training, there was no YouTube, no Facebook. These things hadn't even come out yet. No mm. Facebook, no YouTube, mm. no Instagram. So I've got no um, visual stimulus or inspiration to mm. say, this is what I'm toying towards. Right. It's just the training that I'm enjoying. Yeah, with that in mind, I was just enjoying my training, enjoying my training. It's only when I became a PT that I finally joined the gym mm. and then got to, the, the, to know bodybuilding, etc. you know. Mm. And obviously YouTube had come out by then. I'm, I'm watching mm. people's videos, you know, and um, watching lifting, watching Ronnie Coleman smashing weights. And I'm like, wow, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is the community. This is awesome, right, right, you know, right. this is the community like that. So, um, but yeah, so in, in terms of wanting to be a bodybuilder, n no, there was no, like, that was, that's not why I started. It was mm. because I love lifting. What's, what, what was more important to you when you were coming out? Was it the, the strength level or the look? Uh, strength, definitely. definitely strength. Because every day I'm in there, I was trying to max out. You know, I was trying to be uh, like, just trying to improve my numbers. Back in the day when I first started, I used to write numbers, my numbers down. Obviously I don't do it now, but I used to write my numbers down. Yeah. Even reps and sets. So with, uh, with like, not just personal best, not just one rep maxes. It was, okay, with this weight, I managed this amount of reps. Let's see what I can do. And th that actually helped me with supplement, supplements as well. Because when I first started taking supplements, I really could see, um, I, I had a, something to compare to. I was like, okay, so when I'm taking creatine, I'm, my energy, I'm, I'm getting this many reps. And it was clear. So these, this, this actually helped me to say that um, a supplement actually works rather than just, um, you know, just, just hoping for the best. Right. You know, so yeah, I used to write my numbers down. And uh, yeah, strength was always the, the most important. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Obviously, visually, when you're seeing your physique getting better and better, like, yeah, that's also a stimulus, you know? And, yeah, and you know the two things tying together, so, mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like in today's fitness world with the social media, right, it seems like guys like yourself, Ulysses, you know, other popular guys on social media, you guys have more influence than pro bodybuilders. Um, would, you, would you agree with that? And also, like, because more people listen to you, like, how, how do you feel about that, like, that change, the shift that's happening? Okay, the, the, the way to, to look at it is who is actually, like, because to say a pro bodybuilder might not have as much influence as what, you know, me, it depends on the pro bodybuilder. It depends on the individual, what, they, right. what they're actually doing, their personality, their charisma, etc. Mm -hmm. It's not just the fact that they're a pro bodybuilder. It can be, it's, it's all to do with them as a person, you know, because they are pro bodybuilders right now that have huge influence. And it's recent because a lot of them, realize the potential mm -hmm. uh, and so where they may have initially just competed and never thought to touch social media mm -hmm. i couldn't be bothered it's not my interest they they now see the uh how lucrative it can be mm -hmm. and how you can reach your audience and share with your audience so and so a lot of them are you know being more active on social media and it's not like, like i said it's not the title of a pro bodybuilder can can't be as active as a regular no they can it's just the individual mm -hmm. you know and there are many that are doing it now and mm -hmm. making a huge success of it do you ever get criticism, like from a credibility standpoint? Somebody says, "Well, you know, you don't have much credibility as a pro bodybuilder, but you have more influence because because of your personality." You know what I'm saying? Do you ever get Do you ever get that type of criticism? Um, I've never had it, and I think I'll tell you where I don't think I've had it. If people watch me and know what I do, like in terms of my lifting, I lift. You know, you you want credibility? <laughs> watch Watch me lift, man. I've been lifting. You know. Um, I've been building muscle for 18 years. Mm -hmm. That's credibility, that's experience. So, you know, I've never looked at it like that and I don't think people have looked at it like that either. How do you feel about the social media right now? I mean, do you, I mean one, from one perspective, it looks like it's so oversaturated. I mean, there's so many different personalities. It I is, mean, yeah. And everybody wants to be like, they call it insta-famous, you know, they just, mm -hmm. want, they just want to get that fame. Yeah. I mean, how do being, I feel? You being on top of, the, top of the food chain, how do you feel about it? Um, like, when I started, it, it, it wasn't that. <laughs> right. So, um, and my growth was organic. Now, yeah, it's, it's crazy the, the, the lengths like people will go to to achieve that Insta fame. You can even take me, for example. You can take someone, some, so there's a, there's a huge selection of us that are in this, this arena. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing traveling, you know, traveling all over the world. You're probably seeing 
fast cars, you're seeing you're seeing all sorts of things. Right. You're seeing money, really. And why so shouldn't they? Lifestyle. Yeah, they're seeing lifestyle. Right. They're gonna be they're gonna want that. Why? And and that's fine. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'll say to that is where I'm concerned as an individual, I'm not gonna talk on anyone else, it, it was a lot of hard work. You know, it, and um, it was um, consistency that did it. It wasn't an overnight thing. So with that being said, I will tell anyone that wants to achieve the same thing, be ready to work hard. And actually, I, like my, my love came from lifting and I was lucky to be able to have the opportunity to create what I've created. It wasn't uh, a love of money or the lifestyle and then trying my hardest to get to it, mm. doing all this other stuff, meandering around to get to it. It was the other way around. It was, I love lifting. You know, I've been lucky and smart in a way that I've managed to make a lifestyle out of it. But the love came from lifting. So to anyone that um, is in the fitness industry that wants to do that, um, and they're at the beginning, fall in love with lifting, man. Like, mm -hmm. just, just get your experience from it. Being true to, 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 to actual fitness and wanting to share, rather than you concentrating on that money and concentrating on the lifestyle, because you'll get lost. You'll get lost and you'll, you'll do things to, to get it that, that just won't be right, you know? Yeah. Um, is personal connection with the fans important to you? Like, do you interact with them like on a personal level? As much as I can. In person, mostly. In person, mostly. Online is very difficult, man. It's, it's, I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, I get ridiculous amounts of emails all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook messages, DMs, Twitter messages. It, Too can, much. It's, it's, it's just it's a yeah. huge pool of messages, yeah. you know. So there's, it's impossible for me to physically uh, get back to every person. Mm -hmm. But that is why when I do expos. I go out of my way to make sure mm. I stay there as long as possible. And I always tell them, talk to me. Because a lot of them will take the picture and sometimes I don't even give you eye contact. It's literally, and then they're gone. And it's like, I'm here specifically to talk to you guys. Like, like I know a lot, it's not the same for everyone, but right. me, I'm there to actually meet you right. and talk with you. I get a buzz talking to people at expos, especially when they share stories and say, um, you know, uh, I saw this video and it helped me with this, or uh, this influenced me in this way. That's what, that's, that's good feedback. It, it, it will help you to then go off and want to do more, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, for, so for me, connecting with the um, fans and followers, yeah, in person, 100%. Online, it's too hard for me to, 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 to get back to everyone. Although, every now and then, I will come across a message where I feel, do you know what? I think I need to message this guy back. That, 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 that hit me, I need to get back to them, and I'll try my best, but in person mostly. Do you ever look at comments and do, ever, do they ever get you upset? I read all comments if I can. <laughs> like I try to, you know, like let anyone who says they don't, I don't know if they're telling the truth, man. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I try to read all the comments. Right. Um, do they get me sometimes? Um, I try not to respond to the negative ones, but every now and then I do, mm. is what it is. You know, sometimes I try to respond if I feel I've got something to share or I can actually, because sometimes a person will say some, something negative and there's an opportunity there to educate them. And if I can, I will. You know, and sometimes it's worked. Sometimes someone's done a full circle and gone, whoa, do you know what? I apologize for that, you know? I, wow. I, I, was, actually, I was out of line. It actually happens. Yeah, it wow. happens, yeah. They'll be like, whoa, like, uh, do you know what? Maybe I was wrong on that one. And it happens, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then you just get the regular trolls that will just comment negative because they want you to respond, you know? Mm -hmm. And even that, when that happens, it's like, hey, I tried, mm -hmm. you know? So, for sure, yeah. absolutely. So how do you feel about a constant debate in the fitness industry of who's natural, who's not natural? There's a bunch of names being thrown in that debate, you know, sometimes your name comes up in that debate. Sometimes. It's a constant. Sometimes, all the time. <laughs> all the time, yeah. There's a few other ones as well, but yeah. they're constantly yeah. being thrown in and there's always yeah. debates who's natural, who's not. How, how do you feel about that debate in general? Uh, boring. Very boring for me, personally. On a personal level, it's like, uh, it's like me debating whether this hoodie is black or not. I know it's black, it's black, that's it. So to discuss it every time and time again is frustrating. The bit, I'll tell you what, it annoys me, not necessarily on a, on a personal level, but in the fact that people on YouTube use it to get views and it's boring. To throw other people's names. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like you, can, it's, you can recycle it so many times. Just drop the, drop the word natural in with a title and then it gets views. And mm -hmm. obviously people want to, uh, they want views on their videos and they want to make money from those videos. So they're just going to keep doing it. But for me, it's, it's boring. Um, it's, 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 a, it's just a, it's an overdone subject, you know? Mm -hmm. Really, like from what I, my, my whole brand is Just Lift. So I couldn't give a damn about anything else. <laughs> I, just, I just lift personally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just find it bo boring and tedious. Yeah. Talk about your businesses. So what would you say is your, because you're in the fitness industry, right? Yeah. I'm sure you, you, do, you do various things. Like yeah. what, what, is, what would you say is your, your primary business? 
It's hard, really. I mean, I'm involved in like so much. I've got my obviously my online training, mm -hmm. and then I have uh, my uh, clothing line, SPS Fakes. Um, I have my like my training accessories, mm -hmm. and they all they all do really well. So mm -hmm. um, I couldn't really put a, put a finger on and say this one's the the most. Mm -hmm. You know, they were all doing really good, and just happy doing them. Yeah. You, you essentially you're an entrepreneur. I mean, you you basically mm -hmm. you you started by creating your website. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, created a website, and uh, that's that. That was the start of it, really. And then um, I had this uh, Just Lift idea mm -hmm. that you know. Well, I, I used to tag my tag my pictures with Just Lift because mm -hmm. from seeing on Instagram all the stuff like like what you just mentioned, so much negativity and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. I just thought, you know what? Look, Just Lift. So I used to tag hashtag Just Lift. Then I realized people, you know, they like that 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 mm -hmm. term Just mm -hmm. Lift. And yeah, I created uh, wristbands from it. That was the first thing I ever bought out wristbands. And then um, phone cases, and then from there, created a whole brand with it, with clothing, uh, training accessories, and mm -hmm. yeah, um, and yeah. Is it difficult to be a businessman and sort of like market stuff to your audience, and at the same time, maintain, you know, being just authentic and just being open? Like, do you, do you ever find that balance hard to do? I don't, because I try to make sure that any brand I'm affiliated with or put forward as an ambassador, mm -hmm. I use. So that, that, in that way, it's easy to stay true to what you're putting out, you know, because it's not, you, you, you're not getting a random uh, object and it's like, oh shit, I've got to sell this. How can I sell this? No, I use the stuff that I'm pushing to you. If you're doing that, it's so easy because it's authentic, you know? Mm -hmm. When you see me wrapping my elbows with the, the, the wraps that I'm selling you, I'm, I use them. You know, when you see me doing a, a, a deadlift and I put my belt on, the same belt that I'm trying to sell you is the one that I use effectively to do what I do. It's, it's easy, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, same with supplements. I'll only join a company that I believe in the, the products that they, they put, they, they, they've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, last, one of the last things I want to ask you, yeah. uh, you mentioned you want to get into acting, right? That's, sure, yeah. That's your next progression. Yes. Um, now, you achieved already the top, you know, the top pinnacle of, the, or maybe you're still achieving the top pinnacle mm -hmm. of the, the fitness industry. Everybody knows you. Mm -hmm. So acting, right? Do you think it's important to get into more mainstream for you? And why do you think it's important? I think it's just it's, it's, it's everyone's personal goal. It's, it's, I don't, I'm not saying it, for me it's not it's not important that a, a fitness personality branches mm -hmm. out from the fitness industry to do other things. Mm -hmm. If this is what you wanted to do and you're successful in it, congratulations, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But if you do want to, um, if you do aspire to do more, then do more. I'm doing it because I want to do it. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. Thank you so much, man. No problem, man. Enjoy Great it. interview, man. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Appreciate cool. it. Great meeting you, man.